Maybe you want to make a million dollars by the time you turn 30, or lose 20 pounds before summer, or write a book in the next six months. When we begin to chase a vague concept like success, wealth, health, or happiness, making a tangible goal is often our first step. But is it the right one? Instead of focusing on setting goals, we're better off focusing on building habits. Habits are algorithms operating in the background that power our lives. Good habits help us reach our goals more effectively and efficiently. Bad ones make things harder or prevent success entirely. Let's say you want to read more books. You could set the goal to read 50 books by the end of the year, or you could create a habit and decide to always carry a book with you. First off, goals have an endpoint. That's why many people revert to their previous state after achieving a certain goal. People run marathons, then stop exercising altogether. Or they make a certain amount of money, then fall into debt. Others reach a goal weight, only to spoil their progress by overeating to celebrate. Habits avoid these pitfalls because they continue indefinitely. Secondly, goals rely on factors which we do not always have control over. An injury might derail a fitness goal, an unexpected expense might sabotage a financial goal, and family issues might impede a creative output goal. The third problem with goals is keeping a goal in mind and using it to direct our actions requires a lot of thinking and effort to evaluate different options. The goal of saving money requires self-discipline each time we make a purchase. Meanwhile, the habit of putting $50 in a savings account every week requires less effort. Finally, goals can make us complacent or reckless. Sometimes our brains can confuse goal setting with achievement because setting the goal feels like an end in itself. This effect is more pronounced when people inform others of their goals. Furthermore, unrealistic goals can lead to dangerous or unethical behavior because we make compromises to meet our stated objective. Habits can mean we overshoot our goals. Consider a person who has a goal to write a novel. They decide to write 500 words a day, so it should take about 200 days. Writing 500 words takes little effort, and even on the busiest, most stressful days, the person gets it done. However, on some days, that small step leads to their writing a thousand words or more. As a result, they finish the book in much less time. On the contrary, setting writing a book in four months as a goal would have been intimidating on the final word count alone. As Charles Duhigg wrote, habits often occur without our permission, but can be reshaped by fiddling with their parts. Once we develop a habit, our brains actually change to make the behavior easier to complete. After about 30 days of practice for a simple action like drinking water first thing in the morning, enacting the habit becomes easier than not doing so. More complex habits take longer to form, but they can still become automatic. Our lives are structured around habits, many of them barely noticeable. William James, a man who knew the problems caused by bad habits, summarized their importance this way. All our life, so far as it has definite form, is but a mass of habits, practical, emotional, and intellectual, systematically organized for our weal or woe and bearing us irresistibly toward our destiny, whatever the latter may be. Stephen Covey paraphrased Gandhi when he explained, Sow a thought, reap an action. Sow an action, reap a habit. Sow a habit, reap a character. Sow a character, reap a destiny. In other words, building a single habit can have a wider impact on our lives. Duhigg calls these keystone habits. These are behaviors that cause people to change related areas of their lives. For example, people who start exercising daily may end up eating better and drinking less alcohol. Basically, those who quit a bad habit may end up replacing it with a positive alternative. You can listen to Naval Riff on this topic on episode 18 of the Knowledge Project podcast. Finally, habits can be as small as necessary. A common piece of advice for those seeking to build a habit is to start small. If you want to read more, you can start with 25 pages a day. After this becomes part of your routine, you can increase the page count to reach your goal. Once your small habits become ingrained, the degree of complexity can be increased. Warren Buffett reads all day to build the knowledge necessary for his investment decisions. 
Stephen King writes a thousand words a day, 365 days a year, a habit he describes as a sort of creative sleep. Olympic athlete Eliud Kipchoge makes notes after each training session to establish areas which can be improved. When seeking to attain success in our lives, rather than concentrating on a specific goal, we would do well to invest our time in forming positive habits.